All right, let's uh, finish off today's discussion with the notion of a lossless microwave network. So what we're gonna do is just imagine some end port microwave network here, okay? So each port represents kind of like a transmission line with a positive and negative here with a corresponding V voltage and a current, right? But there's also, there could be another one over here and another one over here and another one over here, right? And I can do this out to n times. Okay, so it's a black box with a bunch of connectors poking out of it is all I know. So I would say, you know, V1, I1, V2, I2, 3, 4, V, N, I, N, and so on. So what we want to do is quantify what we mean by the notion of a lossless network. <clears throat> and one way to think of a lossless network is imagine all of the powers flowing into and out of this circuit. And if it's lossless, then all the power entering should be equal to all of the power leaving, right? Uh, otherwise, I might have some power coming in here and a little bit power leaving there. And if it's lossy, then some of that difference would, would equate to some sort of like thermic, uh, thermal energy being dissipated inside of the box, right? So I'd say I have 10 watts coming in and five watts coming out would imply five watts just being dissipated somewhere inside. And we would describe that as a power loss. So <clears throat> let's uh, think about this a little more mathematically. I'm gonna pluck out the nth port over here, okay? So there is some voltage V sub n and a current I sub n. Sorry, that should be a little n, not a capital N. <laughs> so capital N is the total number of ports, n is some arbitrary port being plucked out of the bunch. So excuse me, that was, that was a little sloppy there. So I'm gonna write the average power, P sub n comma average, and that average is kind of tedious to have to write. So just think of it as implied that all power in the phasor world is time average. So the nth time average power is going to be one half times the real part of V sub n times I sub n conjugate, like so, right? <clears throat> That's just the definition of time averaged uh, power in the phasor domain. So what I'm going to do now is add up all of the powers over all of the ports, right? So I'll just say the total power, total time average power is just the summation from n equals one to big N of all the little P sub n's going into and out of, the, out of the ports, right? So hypothetically, I could have like a positive power representing power going in and negative could indicate power coming out. So if I add them all up, then I should get zero here, right? So I'm gonna write this out as essentially one half times the real part of all of this sort of lumped together. I'm gonna to say n equals one to n v sub n, or sorry, uh, yeah, v sub n i sub n conjugate, <clears throat> just adding them all up and that should equal zero. And if it's zero, then I have what you would call a lossless network, like so, lossless. So let's go ahead and just write this out here, right? So I'm gonna get something like the following. P is equal to one half, and that one half really doesn't matter, right? Because if it's all gonna add up to be zero, then I really don't have to care about this one half anymore. <clears throat> so I could just say two P equals zero, or just P equals zero. So just forget about the one half, it's not gonna change anything, because this is a condition I am now imposing, that everything has to add up to zero. So I'm just gonna get, the real part of say V1 I1 conjugate <clears throat> plus V2 I2 conjugate plus V3 I3 conjugate plus all the way out to V sub N I sub N conjugate, right? So the real part of a sum is actually the sum of all the reals and that's okay. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is play a little game with the notation because you can see how this is extremely tedious but thank goodness we have matrix vector notation. So I'm gonna write this as the real part, and I'm gonna say V1 comma V2 comma V3 comma dot 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 V sub N, and I'm write it in brackets as a vector, as a row vector in particular, and then I'm gonna say I1, I2 dot 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 all the way down to I sub N conjugate, and I'm taking the real part of that. <clears throat> so you see, because of this vector notation here, I can write this out as the real part of V 
transpose times I conjugate. So these are vectors. So this is the beauty again of matrix vector notation is that it allowed me to express this giant summation in a nice kind of nice, uh, a nice little compact notation here. So remember by default, uh, vectors are technically supposed to be column vectors. So this guy here as a row vector implies the transpose of a column vector, right? So you can think of it as almost like a little dot product there, isn't it? <clears throat> so that's pretty clever. But remember also my vector V is equal to Z matrix times I, which implies if I do the transpose of that V transpose, I will get I transpose times Z transpose, okay? And technically, we're also going to assume, just for the sake of argument, that this is a reciprocal matrix or a reciprocal network, okay? This is not a thing we can generally assume, but for the special case of a reciprocal network, which happens a lot in practice, I can basically just say Z is equal to Z transpose. So I'm just gonna say I transpose Z because these are the same matrix. <clears throat> So we'll come back and I basically get P is equal to, well, this isn't even P anymore. I want this to be zero okay, at the end of the day. I'm gonna just get I transpose times Z times I conjugate like so. So the, I want all of this to add up to give me zero power, okay? <clears throat> that is what it would mean to be a lossless network. So what can we now presume about this situation given this condition. So we'll just write this out here. And, and, and actually, don't forget, that, uh, there, there should be a real part of all this here uh, because I have this real here. So let me, let me fix that real quick. I basically have zero is equal to the real part of I transpose times Z times I conjugate. Okay, so what can I do with this little matrix vector equation over here? Well, hypothetically, I can excite this network again, however I want. For example, I could hypothetically take this port over here and just slap a current source onto it here and leave all the other ports as open circuits. So that implies I'll have some current cycling in and out of this little port here, but no current is allowed to flow in any of the other ports. So I am free to excite this system however I want. <clears throat> and basically I'm saying I sub, I don't know, I'll call it K is equal to, you know, is not zero, it's something. <laughs> so, but all the other I's, I1, I2, dot, 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 are also going, are now going to be zero. So what would happen in this situation is I would get zero is equal to the real part of essentially I sub K times Z K K times I sub K conjugate. <clears throat> Oops, excuse me, like so, which implies I times its conjugate is, so these are, these are scalars now, right? This is not vectors here. These are just elements out of them. So this times that is the magnitude, which is a real value. So I will get the magnitude of I sub K squared times the real part of z sub k k is equal to zero. Well, if I'm exciting this with something, this obviously can't be zero, which means this now has to be true. The real part of, so there's my, my real there, z sub k k is equal to zero. Okay, so I'm not allowed to have a real value on the diagonal of this matrix. And you can do a similar argument as well, where I excite maybe one port with a current here and short off another and measure it. <clears throat> and you get a similar uh, result that says the real part of Z sub say K L is also equal to zero. You get, you get a similar argument if you follow through with that same sort of uh, derivation, which basically just now translates to the real part, the real of my entire impedance matrix here has to be zero. And so why is that? Well, that, that should actually not be terribly surprising because remember impedance, we like to represent as a real plus this uh, reactive imaginary bit here. So if I have real resistance in an impedance, that implies ohmic loss. 
So that, that same idea is just going to extend to the entire matrix in general, <clears throat> which means I'm only allowed to have reactive components like capacitors or inductors or you know, lossless transmission lines to have a lossless network. Okay, so that, that's a fundamental property of a lossless reciprocal network is that all of these elements inside this matrix have to be purely imaginary. And that feels like a lot of work to prove something relatively trivial, trivial, but it's one of those little properties that it's, it's nice to prove it because it's going to prove helpful down the road. So then, of course, the same thing will apply if we do a similar argument on the admittance matrix. You will also find that the inverse of that is going to also require no real values as well. <clears throat> okay, so if these conditions are satisfied on a reciprocal network, you will have a lossless network.